Welcome back to the Talk to Your Panther. This is Mike. Today I want to talk to you about Star Wars prequels, 10 things that were pretty cool from the prequels, 10 things that I kind of liked about it, but I'm starting to warm up the prequels a lot more than I did back in the day. A lot of that probably has to do with the sequel trilogy and the subsequent TV shows we've been seeing on Disney+, Plus, and they just don't feel quite as Star Wars-y as they should, and it, it makes you appreciate the prequels a lot more so let's go ahead and get into talking about 10 things that i appreciate from the original prequel era episodes one two and three coming up okay so number 10 on my list is lightsaber battles there were a lot of amazing lightsaber battles and in some case some people could say it's overkill but the fact that lightsabers were something that were really interesting in Star Wars and fascinating. To get to see more of that was a lot of fun. Who knew the Emperor even had a lightsaber? So that was kind of cool and interesting to see that. And of course, Yoda having a lightsaber. And well, all these Jedi having lightsabers. So the battles were wild and crazy. And yes, a little bit overdone sometimes. But lightsabers are a big part of Star Wars. And that's on my number 10 on my list. Pretty cool to see more of it and more hilts and colors and designs. Number nine on my list is Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I have to say that I've heard a lot of people say they feel like this was the greatest part of the prequels. Was his performance and him coming out of it kind of connecting the past to the present. But I have to admit that at first I didn't like his performance. I didn't really care for him as Obi-Wan Kenobi, I kind of felt like he was too young for the role. I felt like he should have been older. As he got older and matured, I started to feel it did feel right. And of course, his acting skill, his ability, and he took on the role really well in the later movies. I just don't feel like the first one was his greatest performance, but the other two, he did really well. As time went by, I believe that his performance actually mirrored Alec Guinness a little bit better, and it felt like it paid proper homage so yeah, I warmed up to it, and it turns out to be one of the best things of the prequel trilogy. Next, number eight on my list is Liam Neeson as Qui-Gon Jinn. And I have to say that if on the surface, Qui-Gon Jinn might seem like a boring character that's just another Jedi that's out there, but I felt like Liam Neeson brought a lot more to that role and really expanded that role, and his performance was outstanding. Actually, this is one of the things that when I watched it in 1999 and I watched The Phantom Menace, I felt like his performance was the best out of all of them. And I really felt like that was something that felt proper to expand the universe of Star Wars. And I feel like he did it all just right. And very well, as he was a rebel, he didn't agree with the council. There were a lot of things. He was quite a conflicted character. And I have to say that every single movie I've seen Liam Neeson in since... I've enjoyed his performance. Contrast that with, say, Samuel L. Jackson and his performance as Mace Windu. I don't think that Mace Windu did a whole lot for Samuel L. Jackson's career. He already was bad as can be in many other performances prior to this. And I felt like this was actually one of his weaker roles. But, hey, check this out. Is this a little bit of foreshadowing? Well, it had to be, but Mace Windu was awesome. But I really like Liam Neeson. I think it was kind of a breakout role for him, for me. Number seven on my list is special effects, and I've got to say that Star Wars was always popular. They pushed the boundaries of special effects back in 1977, 1976, and they kept doing that throughout the 80s. But in the 90s, they went to digital, and they really had to expand that a little bit more. Anything from crazy space battles to giant armies of troops, and a lot of background characters that were edited in... There was just a lot of stuff going on with the digital CGI effects, and that kind of paved the way for more movies, like all the Marvel movies, and all these other movies using this type of technology. If George Lucas never did it, would we still have that? Well, yes. Actually, CGI was the wave of the future. He was just kind of riding along, but still, the effects were so much better with this. Some people feel like it's a little bit too much. They were too many CGI effects going on in the movies. I kind of agree with that, and that's kind of why people clamor for more real-world effects. Still, they did push the envelope in 1999. 
Number six on my list is Django Fett, probably because of the fact that Boba Fett was so cool and so awesome in the original trilogy, and to have a little bit more of his story told during the prequels was a whole lot of fun. And with that, I do believe Boba Fett's still more popular than Jango Fett, but I think Jango Fett looks cooler. It's one of those things that it seems like the Jango Fett costume is a cooler looking costume than Boba Fett's costume, but it also seems a little bit more practical to have armor on your legs also, not just on your chest. So it doesn't really make sense with the whole Boba Fett costume. Still, I have lots of love for Boba Fett, but I think Jango Fett's a lot cooler. And I kind of felt conflicted myself thinking, man, I kind of like Jango Fett more than Boba Fett when it comes to the costume. Anyway, Slice, it was a lot of fun to watch him make his way through the galaxy and to kind of get a little bit more of Boba Fett story with Jango Fett himself. It was pretty cool. He's also the face of every clone trooper. Number five on my list, I put it right in the middle because I'm actually neutral on this point, but Jar Jar Binks. Now, when Jar Jar Binks came out, I just kind of said, okay, whatever. It wasn't my favorite character. I didn't hate him or anything, but he actually spawned so much hate over the last 25 years that he's generated a lot of memes about him. I have to admit that they're kind of funny. There's so many memes that slap a Jar Jar in the middle that it's hilarious. I only snagged a couple just for fun, but the character itself was kind of just a clumsy oaf. But after a while, people started making fan theories about it, and they started saying, well, what if he really was a Sith? He was really controlling everything. And it is quite interesting how deep some people dove into the concept of him being a Sith leader and actually more powerful than even the Emperor, but... It's fun to think about. It is kind of fun to think about these fan theories that people have come up with and saying that he could be a Sith. Very interesting one. But I think it's even more interesting to find out that people actually like him more than Rose Tico. <laughs> it's kind of funny there. Uh, the most hated character from the prequels is way more loved than someone from the new sequel trilogy. I don't have anything against character Rose Tico, but she's not really my favorite either. Number four on my list is Executing Order 66. Now this was interesting for a lot of reasons because there were so many Jedi introduced in the prequels and wondering what happened to all those Jedi. And then you kind of think about the lore. You kind of think about linking why is Obi-Wan hiding on this planet from the Empire and how come he talks about Jedi back in the day, talked about the Clone Wars, talked about a lot of this stuff, but Order 66 is kind of at the heart of the explanation. How they all hunted down and killed all the Jedi, including the younglings. Now, that was pretty intense, and to put that in the movie, it was a bit impressive that they went that far. It was indeed dark, to say the least, but Order 66 did explain a lot. Number three on my list, and what I think is pretty cool about the prequels and what I appreciate is Darth Maul. Now this is something that the character came out was really interesting in the Phantom Menace. Again, this is the, kind of the whole point of Phantom Menace and his face is all over it. But not only was the costume awesome, yielding a double-bladed lightsaber and the lightsaber battles were great, but this character actually was more like Darth Vader in a lot of ways. And it was he was an apprentice he didn't talk a lot, and he was pure evil, and he was out there tearing stuff up. Although the prequels explained a lot about old characters we knew, they created a lot more mystery about new characters, and I think that was actually done right. It was done perfect for a villain, and I love that about the movie, and I also thought just everything from the look of the character to the way the character was executed and how well he worked and the physical role taken on was performed very well and all the choreography was done very well and Darth Maul did kind of carry on in some other continuities but I don't think he ever regained his bad as can be performance as he did in the Phantom Menace and the prequel on my list is vehicles so one of the coolest takeaways from the prequels were the vehicles themselves. The Queen Amidala Royal Starship was 
amazing. This was an awesome ship that was out there. And I was captivated by the whole idea and the concept of it. And, and will they make a toy? And how will they bring it to reality? It actually was a really good toy. It was kind of like the Millennium Falcon for the prequels. And it was a playset and a ship at the same time. But it wasn't vac metalized when it was closed up. It was panel liney. It was gappy in a way. It did not look as streamlined, as elegant as the on screen counterpart, but really was a good attempt. It really is impressive that this thing was even made. I got mine at eToys for 50 bucks. Remember eToys? They also made several other really cool concept kind of vehicles. These were actually in the prequels and they were cool looking. They were similar to the Royal Starship, but way different. And yeah, there's lots of clone ships out there too. That's cool also. Gotta include it. Gotta throw that in there. And of course, the Naboo Fighter, which was sort of the X-Wing of the prequels, which was really awesome. It was so awesome that it had to get resurrected for the Mandalorian. We'll see what goes with new Mandalorian episodes, but pretty exciting. And this is such a cool and elegant ship. It's kind of funny how the old ships, the older they go, the cooler they look. And then technically down the road, the X-Wings look a lot more rough and beat up. And number one on the list, the coolest thing about the prequels, the Destroyer Droid. The Destroyer Droid is awesome. It is menacing. It is basically the Terminator. It does one thing, it does one thing only. The killing machine with a force shield. This is really an awesome, awesome concept. It is a transformer. It transforms into a rolling wheel and rolls around. And then it has a shield and it's got a lot of firepower to it. And it takes quite a bit to beat one of these. I'm actually quite shocked that we haven't seen this in the modern era for the Star Wars Black Series. This is something that is sorely needed in that area, in that department. But when I think back on the prequels, the first thing that pops into my mind is Destroyer Droid. It is something really awesome, especially someone like me who I really love the droids. And it's very intriguing part of Star Wars and the advancement of droids, of robotics and all of that even though it's fantasy sci-fi elements this is really cool i hope to see more of this one day hopefully hasbro is smarter than this how did they get into this predicament but anyway let me know what you guys think about this list of 10 things that i appreciate about the prequels and what else did you like about the prequels do you not like the prequels do you love the sequel trilogy let me know in the comments below like and subscribe tell your hanger out